Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Yesterday, I received an email from a photographer named Matt. Matt was asking me some questions about how I go about using Topaz Denoise AI as a Lightroom plugin. Specifically, when do I send the image over to Denoise AI and what do I do in Lightroom first? So in this video, I'm going to answer his questions and I think answering his questions might help you as well better utilize Topaz Denoise AI as a Lightroom plugin. Now, we're going to work on this image. As you can see, we're in Lightroom and it's another uh, image of a gorilla. <laughs> you probably know that often when I'm doing uh, videos on Denoise, I use these gorilla images. That is because they're often shot at very high ISO. This was shot at an ISO of 6400, and if I zoom in, you can see there's quite a bit of noise in this image. Now, what I recommend you do is you do some specific things in Lightroom first, but then send the image over into Denoise before you do some other things. Now, specifically, what I recommend you do first. Now, this pertains to RAW files. This is a RAW file. And by the way, in the description below the video, I'll have a list of the equipment I used to capture this image, the settings I used, and also I have a discount code for Topaz product. It's a 15% discount. I'll have that listed in the description as well. Now, what I recommend you do to a RAW file before you send it to any plugin, not just to noise, is white balance. A uh, white balance on a RAW file is much more effective than it is on a JPEG, TIFF, PSD file, really anything else. So uh, you're shooting RAW, do white balance first. Now in this case, I like the white balance as it is, so I don't need to worry about that. Secondly, if you're going to use a camera profile, do that as well. Now, as you probably know, there's a profile browser in Lightroom. If I click on these little four blocks over here, it opens up the profile browser. Now you have Adobe Raw profiles. Those will be available for any image, be it um, JPEG, TIFF, or Raw file. Below that is camera matching. Those are the ones that will disappear when it's not a raw file. So if you're going to use any camera matching profile, do that now on your raw file. Now the other profiles, artistic, black and white, modern, vintage, and if you bought any third party pro, um, profiles, they should be available for any image. Although when you create a profile, you do have the option of making it raw file only. But as far as the ones I've always created, as you can see them all here, they're um, not just raw file. They'll work on JPEGs, TIFFs, PSDs, and so on. So profile, if you're going to use a camera matching profile, do it because it will disappear when you, after you send the image over to your plugin. Third, um, it is advised that you send the image as early as possible to any noise reduction software. So really all we've done now is uh, white balance and camera profile and I would say lens corrections do those so if you're shooting a DSLR that needs lens corrections come in and do that and finally go to the detail tab in Lightroom by default Lightroom will often add some sharpening to your image and some default noise reduction I recommend that if it does take your sharpening amount slider and put it at zero take your noise reduction luminance noise reduction and put that at zero but color noise reduction I would leave that alone because I found that actually Lightroom does a very effective job on color noise reduction so just leave that and by default uh, Lightroom for this image is putting uh, color noise reduction at 25 so I'm just going to leave that and really at this point is when you want to send it over into any plugin including uh, Topaz Labs Denoise AI now to do that, I'm just going to right click on the image, go down to edit in, and then we're gonna go down to Topaz Denoise AI. Now it comes up with this, and because it's a raw file, you're going to have one choice and one choice only is to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. Then you have the option of doing either a TIFF, PSD, or JPEG. I recommend you use a TIFF. A TIFF file will be larger than a PSD file, but it seems to, for me, at least work more effectively. 
uh, in most cases and work more smoothly with Lightroom. So I use TIFF. Uh, color space, I'll use Profoto RGB. That's the largest color space, 16 bits per component. Uh, resolution, um, put, you know, anything above 240 is recommended here. If you have an Epson printer, Epson recommends 360 uh, right there, but that is fine. And that's really not as important as people make it out to be. On compression, none. And then I'm going to click edit. Now, when I do that over in the top left-hand corner, you'll see a progress progress bar. Lightroom is creating this TIFF file. Once it creates that TIFF file with those specifications I gave it, it's going to open it, that image up into uh, Denoise AI. And Denoise AI is immediately going to come up with a uh, processing done. And it's telling me there's an update available. And I'm not going to load that update yet. <laughs> so we'll let it finish its preview and see what it does. All right, as I look at it, actually right out of the box, it did a great job. You could see that the, um, the uh, noise is greatly reduced. There's before and there's after. And look at the detail on the gorilla's face. There's before and there's after, before, after. So I'm satisfied with it right like this. I don't need to come over here and readjust anything. So I'm just going to go over here in the lower right hand side and click save image. Oh, by the way, and I forgot to mention, don't do cropping. Um, Donoise AI works best when it has more pixels to look at. So crop after you send the image to Denoise AI. Uh, you notice I didn't do any cropping. I sent the full resolution image over into Denoise. And then Denoise was able to very easily remove all that noise. Now, on this specific image, there's a little space above the gorilla's head. And I really want to tighten up the composition a little bit. So I'm going to crop it now after I send it to Denoise AI. I'll pull it in from the top a little bit. All right, we're back in Lightroom. And I had this image in a collection. I'll just go down here to the film strip. And there is the original RAW file. And there is the image after it came back from Denoise. And I'll zoom in on the original RAW file. And you can see the original RAW file has all that noise. We'll pop over to the image from Denoise. And you can see how much it improved the image. Hopefully, you could see that in the video. Now, as I mentioned, I want to crop uh, right away now. So I'll come and I'll get the crop tool. And I think I'll just pull it down. Just a little bit, maybe tighten it up a bit. I don't know, something like that. I like the uh, gorilla's eye right on that rule of thirds line. Let's just see what that looks like. I left the hand, didn't cut off the hand. We'll leave it at that. And that looks pretty good. Now I could go and do my processing. And I'll just uh, do uh, some quick processing. Actually, this doesn't have to get processed too much. Um, it's not in bad shape, really. If anything, I think it might be a little bit too sharp. Bring those down a little bit. Go to detail, and I'll add a little bit of sharpening. Not too much, but add some effects. So just some real quick sharpening to finish it off. So that is the way I would go about using Topaz Denoise AI as a Lightroom plugin. Now, if you'd like to see me show how to use it as a Photoshop plugin, let me know in the comments below. But again, um, very easy to use um, overall. Do it in the steps I recommend, and I think you'll maximize its benefits. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.